and welcome to Holistic Wellness Revealed. I'm Letitia Sharp, and today I am going to bring to you what I know about crystals and how they can be used for medicine coming straight from Mother Earth. Uh, first of all, I just want to say that I am not an expert trained. I'm not a trained expert. And, um, you know, I've just been using crystals in my daily life and in my work and in my play and with my family pretty much my entire life. I actually uh, remember my 16th birthday. I would, uh, I mean, before that, of course, but, but I would always go to the crystal shop. And my 16th birthday, I had been eyeing this, this beautiful obsidian um, crystal ball. And obsidian is can be different colors, but this one was black. And it was calling to me. And I just, I it was like 80 bucks or 90 bucks. And that was pretty expensive um, in my book at 16 and for, uh, for a rock. And I remember asking my dad for it and him saying, really, that's what you want? I, I mean, it's a rock. I'm like, dad, I had all the reasons, you know, I'll, I'll have it for the rest of my life. It'll be, <laughs> I promise I'll, I'm super happy. And I actually, that was when I began my relationship with Black Obsidian. And I, I feel like that's something to speak to also, is that I do feel like that was the beginning of a relationship. Um, it was there to teach me and there to, not just about what gifts that the crystal had, but also my gifts, my personal gifts that helped to reveal those gifts to me and to teach me so many things. And even though I don't still have that crystal ball, I pray that maybe someday it'll come back to me. <laughs> Can't even recall when, um, when it departed from my possession, but um, I am now connected with obsidian all over any kind of obsidian. So, and I'll, I'll share a story a little bit later about that. But my point is, is that I formed a relationship and it's just like a relationship with a human or an animal or a plant or um, a place where you live or where you hike or where you sit. Um, these crystals hold energy. They are not inert objects. They can... Um, they can actually move. I've seen them and experienced them exploding right in front of my eyes. And <laughs> I had a, a patient one day standing in front of this crystal and I believe it was fluoride. And um, it was this beautiful cluster of fluorite. And she was standing there and all of a sudden it just like cracked open. And it was all over the floor. And she was like, I didn't touch it. I didn't touch it. And at the time, I just kind of smiled. I was like, oh, shucks. I really thought that was beautiful. I wanted to keep it. But <laughs> uh, yeah, I said, that's okay. You know, it needed to expand maybe, or maybe it needed to be many pieces instead of just one. And also, crystals are really sensitive to energy. So maybe it had just filled up to the brim of what it could hold for the moment. And, um, and then it just had to release or let go of its form in the way that it had been. So uh, there's a, there's a little introduction. Um, I am by no means an expert, but I do have a lot of experience with working, uh, with crystals. So moving on, let's get to the business. Uh, I 
thought about what I wanted to share and and a part of it is that crystals have been around since the beginning of time. Um, they are a part of this earth, maybe even before we were a part of this earth. I guess that's debatable evolution discussion, but um, they are part of what makes this planet this planet. And um all cultures have some form of using crystals in their in their way of living and their way of growing and their tools. Uh, I know that I'm coming from Colorado. There is a strong representation of Native Americans there. And you can feel it in the earth. And if you're out hiking around, it's quite possible that you may find evidence of when they were walking on this earth and when what they used for tools and what they used as um, ways to be able to clean hides, ways to be able to hunt, um, ways to be able to adorn themselves. Uh, ways to be able to take medicine. It's it's quite fascinating, actually, if you are ever able to look into that. It The resources are abundant with how they were able to use the crystals. And I'm sure that it had to do a lot also with the energy of what they what they felt from them. So um, different crystals have different formations. Some of them are in the shape of squares. Some of them are in the shape of diamonds. Some of them are in the shape of spikes. Uh, I have some here right now, actually, that I'm going to show you. So this is incredible. This kind of looks like it came out of the cave that Superman lived in to me. It's just amazing. And the fact that our earth made it super delicate too. These little pieces can just break right off. So there's that shape. There's the shape of, say, a natural quartz crystal that has different, you can see it has different parts of the crystal growing off of it and you can even see it striated on the inside I don't know if you can see that or not but that and there's another point here so it's like a mirror um there's oh here's one that has squares it's got a square so it kind of looks like quartz but it's shaped differently. So I know it's not quartz. I don't know what it is, actually. We'll get to that a little bit later. Um, and then you've got these little kinds of clusters where they're little points, like an amethyst. So beautiful. And so I just wanted to give you a few examples of what how they naturally have different formations. And that's how the experts have been able to identify what kind of crystal is what kind, and then they can start studying them and feel what they have to offer and what medicine that they can bring to us. Um, there's different colors, and the colors can also be a form of medicine depending on what that ignites in you and uh, there's also different shapes that they can either naturally come in or that they are molded or cut into like even so much as to like be in the shape of an animal and Back to the Native Americans, they have things called effigies. And the effigies were oftentimes shaped in the form of an animal. And that animal was 
usually an animal that was a helper to them. And they would carry that with them as a reiterance of the strength of that animal. So it goes back to so far before we can even remember. And I feel like that's a really important part to bring up. Uh, also, one other thing that I would like to talk about before I get into some of the properties of the different crystals is that there's books about, and you can study and you can go to gemology school. Um, one of my sisters is a gemologist. She knows so much about crystals. I would have loved to have had her on and interviewed her, but she wasn't available. So um, there is an entire study behind this and it's, it's immense. It's kind of like any healing art. You know that it's infinite, the amount of wisdom that you can gain from these magical rocks. <laughs> and what I want to really bring forward with that is that even if a book says that it's only supposed to be used for a certain purpose or, I mean, obviously if there's dangers, then please be advised and consider what those dangers are. Don't put some kind of a crystal in your water that is going to leach something that's not, um, that's not dig ingestible. <laughs> Don't do that if the book says not to, just because unless, you know, you have zero connection to the outcome of, of what that, of that might uh, incur. So these books are a form of guidance. They are not always where your relationship with these crystals end. I know that before I ever read about what black obsidian could hold and do, I found how she could accompany me. Um, I had really upset stomach when I was growing up. Um, I actually had an ulcer very young and I found that black obsidian crystal ball and I would hold it on my belly and I would roll it around and it would just feel better. I would just feel better. Not just a sense of calming, a sense of physical um, peace within my organs. And later I came to find out that Actually, that really helps with relieving some of the tension in your stomach or even your lower abdomen. And I just intuitively knew that that's what I needed and that's how I needed to use it. And even on another occasion with a black obsidian point, and it was tiny, it was a little itty bitty tiny uh, black obsidian point. I had gotten a bee sting and with that bee sting, it had just, it got really hard and red and hot and it was big. It had, it had swollen up. So it was inflamed and I had sat with it for about a day and then I went to meditate and I looked down and there was this obsidian point that I hadn't actually used for anything. And I picked it up and I just intuitively started swirling in this spiral and felt it pulling out whatever the poison of the bee was for me and I released it and it almost immediately the swelling went down the redness was relieved the um the size decreased the hardness uh, went away. My my skin and my tissues began to be um, more soft like they normally were. So 
I would like to invite you to find your own relationship, find your own uses, find what the medicine of these gifts that the earth is giving us are for you. What does amethyst mean to you specifically? If you read in any book, it says it dispels negative energy and it um, it's great for, you know, other things as well. But what does it mean to you? To me, amethyst is just this, um, it's a lifter. It's like a lightener. It makes everything a little bit lighter, the energy around. And it also is a great dispeller of negativity, whether it's in a room or a person or even myself. If I'm feeling negative and um, I have my amethyst next to me, I just feel lighter and that's a gift. And that's my relationship with amethyst. So I encourage you and invite you to find your own relationship on top of what um, the experts have studied and found to be commonalities because that's really all we can do, right? We find common behaviors and common experiences that everyone has had with different um, gifts of this earth. And then we say, okay, so 5,000, 100,000 people have had this experience. So maybe that's the gift that this, this crystal has to offer. And if you have a different gift than an experience, then that's okay too. My point is to um, really allow yourself to go in, into that essential knowledge space, not that thinking brain of, okay, wait, what is that good for? Uh, I can't use it unless I... Um, I can only have it if it's in this pyramid or if it's in the shape or if I wear it on my throat. Um, so anyways, that's a big point of what I wanted to communicate today is that we all have our own essential knowledge and it goes beyond our thinking brains. It goes into how we feel from the inside and how we gather that information. And the more that we go there to that space and find our relationship to this planet and each other, then the more powerful that we become as humans being. So, okay, let's move on. On to what do I have? I have? If you could see, I would turn the camera around. I have all these crystals around me. I kind of feel amazing <laughs> right now. So I have citrine. Citrine, I really wanted to bring today to the table because it is an amazing cleanser. And I always feel safe with citrine because, and that's it's shaped into a point. And then there's also this citrine that is raw, which is pretty cool. And you can see they both have this beautiful yellow. Um, citrine also is a self cleanser. So it has the ability to clean itself, even if it's helping to clean the energies around it. So I use it definitely by my massage table, Definitely in my, uh, another thing because of its bright nature, a lot of times, and it's kind of golden, a lot of times people say that it's really great for financial abundance and bringing in, in like the abundance of the sun, the abundance of light and life. And um, I feel the safest with crystals that know how to clean themselves because that's something that we have to be really aware of with crystals is making sure that we clean them. I don't know if you've ever been to a crystal store or not, and you'll see like, maybe they'll 
take a tuning fork and they'll ding next to the crystal in order to like clear it from the shop and have a, a very um, a small but very significant ceremony that not only communicates to the crystal that it's moving from this space where it had a job of showing itself and being available for people to choose or going to a personal experience where somebody's going to use or gift that crystal in a very specific manner individually. So remember about the cleansing. There's other ways to cleanse crystals also. I'll just mention those now. One is that you can put it in salt water. You could, if you live near an ocean, you could take it to the ocean and allow it to be in our ocean and um, let it cleanse like that. You can leave it out overnight in a full moon that has a very great cleansing effect. You can also leave it out during the day in the sun. Um, you can put it in salt, just regular salt. You could get sea salt and put it in a dish and put the crystals. I have an amazing um, jeweler friend. She just does, in fact, she made these earrings. Yay. Anna. Anyways, she, um, she, when she would gift her jewelry in the box, the box was filled with salt and then she would put the jewelry in it and gift it that way. And that was just a beautiful representation of, Hey, I'm giving you a clean crystal. Now it's yours to be able to choose how to use it. So those are some ways of cleaning your crystals. Um, and also the sun, just so we have a feeling of cleaning the crystals, you can also activate the crystals and kind of re rejuvenate them. So that can also be done with the sunshine. And you can feel, ask the sun and ask the crystal to take from the sun's rays what it needs in order to be able to be filled up and renewed. Uh, let's see, what else? I want to um, share a couple of crystals like rose quartz. Rose quartz is amazing for heart opening. It just feels really loving. It's this um, unconditional love feeling. And whenever you feel it, I always just, I want to immediately just put it right on my heart. And it's a very common feeling with the rose quartz. And I just wanted to bring that up. Also, um, rhodochrosite feels very fulfilling to my heart, but it feels different. The rose quartz feels like it almost wants to expand my heart and, and open it up. And the rhodochrosite to me feels like it wants to just sort of mend my heart and give loving uh, healing to my heart. So that's my experience with these two. We also have Amber. I have a great story about Amber. Uh, as if you've ever watched my show, you know, I have a 16 year old and she's, it's about that time for wisdom teeth to come in. And if you have a baby or if you've ever seen the babies with these necklaces of beads on them, and usually they're kind of like a dark orange. This is a little bit of a lighter orange, um, or yellow and it's Amber. It's super light. And it comes from a tree, so I guess it may not technically be a crystal, but this has some amazing healing power with um, alleviating the pain associated with cutting through those gums. And, and so I have some beads, and of course I made her a bracelet so that she can wear it around to help support her because, yeah. That's what I do. And 
Oh, here's some obsidian. I did all this talk about obsidian and I didn't show you. There's different kinds of obsidian. First of all, there's black obsidian, which this is actual arrowhead. This is proof of the tools that the Native Americans used. And that's pretty amazing. This is also obsidian. My mom actually found this and it looks like this could have been used as a, like a drill or maybe to make holes in leather. Um, also this end could have been used as a scraper of sorts, or maybe like this. And you can just, each one fits in your hand differently. And then there's another kind of obsidian. This is red obsidian. And I didn't know what this was for forever. And then I one time looked in a book and was like, oh my gosh, that's, that's my ball. I didn't know what it was. And it's this beautiful red obsidian ball. So my, that's just a few stories and crystals to share with you. Um, but my main thing to tell you and to share with you today is that when you go to get a crystal, or if you want to get a crystal for someone, I'd really I'd invite you to just allow yourself to feel clear. And once you feel that clarity and you feel calm, then allow yourself to open up to whatever it is that wants to come and help you at that point in time. And, and then just see where you go. If you're in a crystal shop or sometimes if you're super blessed, you might be in nature and actually come across crystals. And that's phenomenal. <laughs> My mom um, has gotten a lot of the black obsidian. She's gotten a lot of the amethyst. My other friend, she has a little, it's almost like a spring of quartz crystal coming up out of the ground uh, on her property. And it's just, it's really beautiful. And then you know that, hey, maybe that's for me. But you can also do this in a crystal shop. So you go in and you'll hear crystal shop workers say, well, just, you know, they're like, well, should I get this or should I get that? And I can't tell you how many times I've heard crystal people who work in crystal shops say, well, you have to feel it. And that's my main point with this whole talk is that crystals are here to help to activate us and to help us find our healing that's within us because ultimately we are that we are that energy that makes up crystal energy we're not just the energy we're the organic matter we all came from the same place and we're all going to return to the same place and so this is really just baby particles and parts of us that are coming back to us to be able to teach us how to reclaim our inner knowledge. So there's, I really, I realize now that I could probably talk for hours about crystals and stories and the importance of, and all of the things. But what's really important is that you go out and you find your relationship to them and don't be afraid of it. Just be open and really be honest and listen to yourself. And if you have any kind of a question, then you can refer to the books. There's so many great books out there. Um, one that I always use is the Crystal Bible that gives some um, well-rounded and who's it by? It's by Judy Hall. Here's this book. She has a couple of them. There's Love is in the Earth that gets a little more in depth with 
um, some of the spiritual aspects of crystals and how they've been known to affect people. And that is by um, Melody. This is a great book also. And there's just a ton out there. So have fun. Go ahead and find your way into a crystal shop. See if that's a way of Mother Earth being able to talk to you and help you remember some of your essential knowings. So with that, I am going to say thank you so much for watching and listening. And um, I'm excited to know that you're all on this adventure to go out and find what crystals speak to you and how they can enhance your life. Thank you so much to Think Tech Hawaii for providing this platform for us to be able to have, have this information out for everyone to be able to see. Um, I am really charged up right now with all my crystals around me. So with that, I'm just going to say, um, enjoy this day. Mahalo. Aloha. We want to announce that ThinkTech Hawaii is moving into a new phase and will not be producing regular talk shows after April 30th. We will retain our website and YouTube channel and will accept new content on an ad hoc basis. We are also developing a legacy archive program to provide continuing public access to our content. If you can help us cover the costs of the transition and the development of our legacy archive program, please make a donation on thinktechaway.com. Thanks so much. Aloha.